Hi quilters, I'm Joyce Grandy with Material Girls of Florida and this is my Christmas quilting in July part two video. I plan on doing a total of four Christmas videos in July so if you're new here be sure to click the subscribe button and the bell to get notified when I post a new video. The second project is another pattern by Material Girls and is available in my Etsy shop as an instant download. There is a link in the description below. This wall hanging is made up of lots of half square triangles. Notice the prairie points around the outside edge that point towards the center. Every now and then there's a red one just for fun. In this video, I'm going to demo how I do the half square triangles and how I make the prairie points around the edge meet, if not perfectly, pretty darn good. So let's get started. So first let's do the prairie points around the outside of a quilt. This is my pretend quilt. It's just a practice quilting piece that I had. And I made uh, 44 inches of prairie points. I have several videos on my website on how to do this. One with a stencil, one without a stencil. So go, I'll put links in the description for that. So to make the prairie points fit, let's line it up here. We want to start in the corner right there. And the corner is the most important part. The corners have to meet. And that's not always easy. So let's look up here. This point goes past there. So let's fix that. I'll show you how we're going to make that fit. We're going to cut the point right at that fold. Right? There we go. I cut the string off. It's still too big. But now what I'm going to do is go into one of the back, somewhere in the back ones, cut it out, cut it apart, because we're going to fudge it and move it around a little bit. So now we know we want the corners to meet. Put that back. Put this back and then put this one on this one will go right on top no one will ever see that this one is off by a little bit believe me no one will ever notice or say anything or or know what's going on and how I get that to stay is you all remember if you've watched my videos my good old Elmer's glue with the glue tip I would put a dot of glue on the ends Oops, let me come down, dot of glue, dot of glue, and you can just glue these back together. And, and I would hit it with the iron, which I don't have in front of me right now, but you hit it with the iron as you've seen me do in other videos. So here's my binder clips. I would go through and put some clips in strategic places because we have to base this down. It's part of the binding, and trust me when I tell you, you don't want to try to sew the points and the binding at the same time. It's way too complicated and hard to keep everything straight. <clears throat> so I wouldn't sew it yet, but I am going to pin that down so that when I go to the next side, I want to show you what happens when the piece is too, just a little too short, let's say. So let's go here. Oh good, this, so this came out perfect. So my corners are the most important part. And when you come down here to the very bottom, if you can see, it's just a little bit off. So again, we're going to go as close as we can, cut off the strip. Let's see. Now, the great part about these points is there's quite a bit of give. I could probably stretch this, oops, over let me put it let me put a binder in there so I can move my finger and you can see I'm working with the camera at a different angle for this video so we're testing and you can see if I stretch this how about like this if I stretch this it has quite a bit of give in it so I could get this all the ways up to that point I think and be fine just go through and put more binder clips but just for the sake of knowing what to do if that happens again I'm going to show you how I would cut it apart. So I would cut this again on the fold, always cut on the fold. And if I had to spread them apart a bit, let's see. So what I would do is just spread them, oh, let me see, just spread them apart. That is actually, let me move this down. 
a little bit wider in one spot than the other spots. And again, you would never know to look at it. So again, take your glue, 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 and put this down. And again, I would go through and put binder clips before I sew and then take it to the sewing machine. Sorry, I'm working upside down there. And so I would go around and do that to all four sides, binder clip all four sides, and then take it to the machine and sew an eighth of an inch. I want to sew inside the seam line because when you go to put your binding on, so let's say this is all sewn down, the way I did the binding, and I'll, I'll give you a close up on the project later on, I sew to the front at the quarter of an inch mark after this is all tacked down and then flip it to the back and I do a glue and machine uh, binding attachment. And I'll, I'll, as I said, I'll show you that clip later on. These clips I got on Amazon and there was 160 of them in the package and I love them. They came in the tin, which is kind of funky, but nonetheless, it's an easy place to keep everything. And I'm hardly using pins at all anymore. These are so handy to use. So let's go do a close up of the quilt. So here's the binding of the quilt with the prairie point sewn on. And if I flip this over and get real close, you can see on the red, I like to use stripes. If you know my work, you know I use a lot of stripes. You can see the machine stitching uh, on the back. It's also machine stitched in the ditch and you can't see it because I used green thread on the top and after I glued this down I went turned it around hit it with the iron to dry it turned around and top stitched it with green on top and the white on the back and I have a separate video on that so I'll also put a link to that in the description. One more thing about the prairie points I wanted to mention. In my Etsy shop, I put together a kit where you can get the stencil, a glue tip, and any one of these four patterns that uses prairie points, the large purse, the mini purse, the prairie point pillow, or the wreath pattern I just showed you um, for $20 and a flat rate shipping of $5, which is normally close to $8. The issue with the, with the stencil is, it's hard to mail. You can't fold it, but you can roll it. So the only way to mail this $6 stencil is to put it in an $8 box, right? So that's kind of like crazy. So I tried to make that more doable for people. If you're interested in getting the complete kit, go to my Etsy shop and I'll have the link in the description. Next up, are the half square triangles. I'm just going to quickly show you my technique. Nothing too different, but I'll tell you why I'm doing this. So I started with two seven and a half inch squares. I completely sewed around the outside edge. And now I'm going to take my ruler and my rotary cutter and cut from one angle to the next. And honestly, I typically do this on my rotating board, but I don't have it out, so we'll manage. And there's a lot of forgiveness in this. I made it purposely oversized so I can square it up. And then we're going to press, get that off, okay, press these open on my wool mat. And the reason I'm using the wool mat is as you probably figured out, um, these are bias edges now. Oh, I forgot to say this. Before I cut these, after I sewed them, I spray starched them. Heavy starch, both sides, and hit it with the iron. And what starch, I think I have this, right now I have, I bought this at Publix, but typically I buy the Dollar Tree dollar cans of starch. I usually have two or three cans and I happen to be out when I went to look. So we're going to press this open towards the dark side, whatever your darkest fabric is. And I'm using the wool mat because the wool grips the fabric and it will not stretch out. So I would press all four of these open and pretty much, oh, nope, I have to trim them up. 
Okay, there we go. I'll just do those two. And then we have to trim them to be four and a half inches. That's the size that the um, wreath uses, a four and a half inch half square triangle. Uh, now, this is my new favorite little toy. This is by Sue Daly. It's a very small uh, turntable and it's not crazy expensive and it's really handy. So I need a four and a half inch. So you see how they're oversized. This is probably about five by five, but I'm gonna trim it down. This way I don't have to be as careful sewing as if I had tried to make it come out perfect every time. I much rather do the extra step of trimming so that I don't have to, uh, I, I listen to books when I sew, so I don't have to concentrate as hard. And there we go. There's a half square triangle. So from that seven and a half inch square, I would get four half square triangles. This um, project takes a total of <clears throat> 26 of the green um, half square triangles, and I wanted a variety. So I didn't use the eight cut method. If you watch a few videos out there, there's a way to do eight half square triangles at one time. But if you were going to make them just a light and dark green, you could probably look that up and, and find that to be just as good. Th I like this because they have the starch, it's nice and hard, <clears throat> a little stiff, I wouldn't say hard, just a little bit stiffer than usual. But when you go to sew them together, you have a little bit of give. So if you're not perfect on your seams, you got just a little bit of give to get it to work. And that's, to me, always a good thing. So there you have it. And that's the end of this video. If you found it helpful, you liked it, please hit the like button. Again, I don't know why, but, you know, Bubba says it's very important, so please do that. And see you next time.